Hi guys, hope you're all doing well. Neil at Atelier Autos here. Welcome back to another video on my channel. And for the first time in my videos, it's going to get a video all of its own, my Alpha 145 Cloverleaf. So uh, we'll get it on the ramp and see how it's holding up after it's sat outside for probably two years. It did get it MOT'd last year. It passed, it needed a little bit of welding doing to it. But other than that, it's, it's done zero miles since its last MOT. So we'll get it up in the air and see how it is. So I've now owned this for probably over five years now. It's always been a little bit of a toy for me. I originally bought it off somebody who emailed me and said they wanted rid because it was uh, not getting used anymore and it needed a little bit of TLC. So I got it, did a little bit of welding to it, did a cam belt on it and it's not needed anything since. It's probably been one of the most reliable alphas I've ever owned. I think the only other thing I've done to it is put a tyre on the rear, Pirelli tyre, because we've got one of their Toyo proxies and um, it's got a puncher in it. So yeah, it is a little bit sorry for itself. I have threw a sponge over it, but it does need um, a good sort of decontaminating and a polish. But to be honest, you know, it's just my little, little abandoned 145, so uh, not really done much to it over the years. Inside is all there, apart from the speaker covers, which I mentioned in another video. Really common, they're disappearing, but I should have a couple somewhere, so I do want to pop a couple of those in there. Front seat's getting a little bit dirty, just for me jumping in and out of it with dirty clothes on. Uh, rear seats are all lovely and nice. Everything inside is all great. Mileage is 141,658 miles. We've got no problems with the airbag, no problems with the ABS. As far as I remember, all the dials and buttons all illuminate. Airbag, ABS. All working perfectly fine. Let's open the bonnet and have a look under there. Let's try and get under the bonnet one-handed. Just need a new uh, plastic bit on the end. I, I did order one, but I don't know what I've done with it. So the engine runs fine. This is a car which hasn't been ran in probably, it hasn't, I haven't started in a few months. So it's a little bit tappity. That will all quieten down without a problem. But it's the uh, phase one metal top engine. Everything is uh, all there working fine. It is due a cam belt now, just on time, definitely not on miles. It's probably done a thousand miles in five years, if that. So um, it does need uh, a service in a cam belt now. But everything there is all fine. Rust wise, you know, it's doing, holding up really well. There's no issues when it comes to behind here. Just filled with crap, all the chassis legs are all fine. Let me turn the engine off so you can hear me a bit better. Right, now the engine's off, you should be able to hear me. Um, I mean, the engine, you know, it's been great. I've never had any issues with it. I have done a cam belt on it, but it is due again just purely on time because of the fact it's probably done less than a 1,000 miles in five years. It's not done many at all. Um, Rust-wise, you know, all the front end isn't too bad, to be honest. You've got no major issues, nothing going on behind there, really. Chassis legs are all fine. Front panel is all fine. Few little spots coming through on this side, but nothing major at all. I mean, this is what a 23 year old car now, it's all fine behind there. Get rid of that leaf. So, you know, I've got quite, a, quite an emotional attachment to this now. It's probably one of the cars I've owned the longest over the years, but used probably the least. So, let's get it on the ramp now and let's see how it's doing underneath. Right, it's in the air now. I have another look under it. Let's just finish getting it up. So, I kind of don't want to look at it but it should be fine because I undersealed it last year before uh, the lockdown so it shouldn't be too bad and it's perfectly fine so how's the rear end doing it's not too bad we've got upgraded e-back anti-roll ballast fitted to it we've got performance suspension performance springs uh, there were pretty good distance pads that were on it at the time we've got a performance exhaust on it a super sprint one it goes all the way down to the cat uh, it had a new rear caliper on it for its two MOTs ago, I think it was. But yeah, the floor pan, surprise, not surprisingly, but it isn't too bad. It has had welding in some places in the normal spots here. Um, here, it's had a patch down there and another little patch over there. But generally, it's not too bad. I mean, the front subframe is all original. It's not been taken off or um, refurbished. I've just given it a coat of uh, stone chip and that's holding up really well indeed. 
Uh, all your bushes and drive shafts and stuff are all perfectly fine. Loads of life left in the tyres. All the gators are fine. We do need an oil and filter doing to it. And a cam belt, but I'm going to get that done before long. So surprisingly enough, it's actually fine. It doesn't need any welding on the, on the underside. Yeah, the rear subframe could probably do with a little bit of TLC if you want to get that particular about it. Um, but you know, all the front end on the radiator is fine. The radiator support, I'm going to have to change that because that's non-existent. Yeah, the radiator support hasn't held up well. I do have another one of those upstairs, so I'm going to get one of those fitted. So overall, it's not doing too bad for a car which, I've, yes, I have neglected over the last 12, 18 months. But she's a cracking car. Still fires up first time every time. Let's get it down now and I'll tell you some of the other mods it's had done to it. So the engine, it has had some performance camshafts fitted. It's had the ECU remapped, so I think it's probably going to be running about 165, 170, dare I say it. So I'm not really into my performance tuning, so I couldn't tell you, but I do know it is pretty rapid. Um, other mods I've already said, it's had the uh, EBAC anti-roll bars front and rear, upgraded springs and shockers. And um, I think that's about it, but yeah, it's a, it's a cracking car. Um, it's not getting used, so if anybody is interested in buying it, let me know, and I might have my, my hand twisted to sell it. Of course, what I'll do, I'll put a 12 months MOT on it, do a cam belt, give it a quick service, and change that front radiator support. And, uh, you know, she should be good to go. She's a cracking car. She starts up first time every time. And then she'll be missed, but she's not getting used, so it's only fair she goes to another enthusiast, unfortunately. So uh, I shall leave it up to you guys now whether you want to save this one or I'll leave it sitting outside for a few more years. So uh, Almost forgot to mention the price, but really, I don't have a clue in this current climate. I'm, I'd like to imagine between two and two and a half. I've seen other cars out there, people wanting more, people wanting less. The, the market for 145s is up and down. People get what they the get, which is lucky. But um, I'd be happy with two and a half with all the modifications on this, plus a fresh cam belt, plus a service and a full MOT. Uh, and the fact you've seen it in this video, so I've got nothing to hide on the car, whereas a lot of 145s have um, rust issues to hide. So, uh, yeah, so there you go, guys. So thanks for watching. See you in the next video.